Hello and welcome back to our physics class. Today in this video we are going to discuss about diffraction of light. Diffraction of light is a phenomenon due to which light ray bends when it strikes sharp edges and spreads in the geometrical shadow region. That phenomena we call it as diffraction of light. Suppose it's like this, suppose this is the source of light and then you have a slit or an object like this. This is end A of the object, sharp edge and this is end B of the object. Then generally we know that light travels in a straight path. So it will go this way and then this region if this is a screen or a wall then you will see this is the geometrical shadow region. This is also your geometrical shadow region, a shadow will be formed by the obstacle. Geometrical shadow. But now, because of the property of bending of light, when you strike the sharp edges, little bit it will go like this. Here also it will bend and enter into the geometrical shadow region. It will enter inside the geometrical shadow region and a faint shadow, light shadow will be formed. This phenomena of bending of light when it strikes the sharp edges of an object, we call it as diffraction of light. You must not get confused with the phenomena of bending of light when light travels from one medium to another medium, that is called refraction. And this bending of light when it strikes the sharp objects, this phenomena we call it as diffraction of light. There are two types of diffraction. Well, one is Fresnel diffraction. The one what you can see on the board it is Fresnel diffraction. And the other type of diffraction is because of the web front, not directly due to the source of light. If a plane web front comes and strikes, suppose this is your plane web front, these arrowheads are the light rays, this is your plane web front, and if it comes and strikes the sharp edges, and also the same phenomena we can see the geometrical shadow. In the geometrical shadow, the light will bend and enter inside, and faint shadow will be formed. That phenomena, or that type of diffraction, we call it as front of our diffraction. And in this diffraction due to a single slit, we are going to follow this front of our diffraction, not the first null diffraction. Now let us see diffraction due to a single slit, that is our front of our diffraction. In front of our diffraction, due to a single slit, I'll do the setup here on the board. Let this point be A. This is one part of the metal with a sharp edge. And this is the other part of the metal with a sharp edge B. This is the sharp edge. Now, this slit is very, very narrow, but to study, for study purpose, we are taking a big gap here. Let the width of the slit be A. Then, we will take one source of light, say S, exactly at the principal focus or the first focus of the convex lens, L1. We we'll allow the light ray. We will take three rays like this. Then, as the source is placed in the principal focus, the rays will go parallel. The rays will go parallel to this point A. I will have to take it slightly up here. And the width of the slit is still A. There will be a plane web from, let us mark this is M, M dash. These are the light rays. From the center, the light ray will travel straight. Here, according to Huygens principle, secondary wavelets will start to grow. And then this way you take it 
annular convex lens. Let us uh, name it as lens L2. The straight ray, the Hisdale ray, which are parallel to each other. First set of rays. This is the first set of rays. They will converge at the principal focus of the lens L2. At this point, we will keep one screen. Suppose this is your screen. Let this be O. So here, when we take three points or particles in the plane wave front, then we'll get a set of rays like this. After coming to the lens, they will converge at a point on the screen. For study purpose, we will take only three sets of rays. Let this point be P on the screen. Now you may be thinking why I am taking three, three sets, three rays coming and reaching the center of the screen, three rays going and reaching the point P on the screen. But to understand this, I will show you here. Suppose if these two are the slits, these are the wavelets. At equal distance from A and B, if I choose this wavelet, the second dot, here also the second dot, then if I use Eigen's principle, the wavelets will start to grow like this. This way it will start to grow. And for this point also, if I draw the wavelets, crest, throw, crest, throw, crest, throw, like this, it will grow. For this point, if I draw the light rays, it will spread equally in all the directions this way. Like this to go, like this to go. In this set, suppose I have drawn four rays, here also if I draw like this, four rays, one, two, three, four rays like this. Then you will find that I have taken only two points. Let it be P1, suppose, this point, and let this point be P2. Then you can see if I take two points, then two, two sets of rays will be parallel to each other. Here, if I consider this one as uh, A or M, then with this line, which is parallel, this one you can see, one, or I'll number it as one, 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 one set there parallel. And if I take this one with this ray, or if I take this ray, Suppose this is wave number 2 for the first wavelet, then wave number 2, this line is parallel to this line, so 2, 2 pairs will get it, or pairs will get it, 2, 2 will get it, because I have taken only 2 points. But if I take here 3 points, that is 1, 2, 3, then there will be 3, 3 sets, 1 set will contain 3 rays, they will be parallel to each other, that's why I have taken this is for the incident that is coming straight parallel to the principal axis of the lens and the other two rays I have taken top and bottom like that here also from the center one if I draw a straight line like this the other two rays will come from top and the bottom this way you take so all together one set this is another set now by how much the light ray has been diffracted this one to know you'll have to that means you are going to find out this angle theta. Here you are not going to find out the position and where the darkness is formed or where the lightness is formed or light, um, brightness is formed. Here we are going to find out this angle theta by how much it got diffracted. Then we will get maximum or we will get minima. Now here the terms that we use, we don't use bright and dark. Earlier in interference pattern, we used bright fringes and dark fringes. Only two varieties were there. Now, this time we'll be using three terms. These are the terms that we are going to use here. First of all, the central maxima. We'll use the word 
सेंट्रल मैक्सिमा सेंट्रल मैक्सिमा इज द पॉइंट यू विल गेट एट द सेंटर ऑफ द बोथ द लेंसेस एट द सेंटर ऑफ द स्क्रीन आल्सो वी कैन से द इंसिडेंट rays that they are parallel to each other traveling from here and here they travel they have equal path difference so the difference in path is zero again if i take from from here and from here from the top half and from the bottom half at equal distance then i'll get rays like this they also will get ray like this they would have zero path difference because their path lengths will be equal that's why here at the center of the screen there will be central maximum will and make it uh, rather on the board later on the second thing that you you are going to learn is secondary minimas secondary minimas and the third word that you are going to learn is about secondary maximas these are the terms that we are going to use here you know we thinking what is uh, the secondary minima secondary maxima because in this uh, diffraction pattern the brightness and the darkness are not of the same width like this you get it in diffraction pattern this is central maxima this is first secondary maxima this is also called first secondary maxima these two will be at an equal distance from each other on both sides of the screen then this is your second secondary maxima this is your second secondary maxima on either side of the screen this is the point o here and likewise secondary minimas this is your first secondary minima right at the end of central maxima then after that this is your second secondary minima like it you get it so all are termed as secondary minimas and secondary maximas because the amplitude dies out here is more here it is a little bit less here is again less next one may be very very less and then it will vanish that's why we use the terms like this secondary minima and secondary uh, maximas now to write in exam you can do like this for the central maxima the condition the first one central maxima you write like this the wavelengths that are that are emerging from points a and b the wavelengths that are emerging from a and b have the same path difference has the same path difference or the has the same path length or the path difference is zero so position o that i have written on the screen let me see position o will produce central maxima that means in the center maximum bright fringe will be uh, bright light will be produced now here you don't require any mathematical step to write down but for this secondary minimas and secondary maximas mathematically you can find out let us see about secondary minima as how to produce now uh, before producing secondary minimas you have to know this 
the path difference between the ray that is traveling from A or the wavelength that is traveling from A and from B to find out you draw one perpendicular line like this if this is B let this point be and then to form a right angle triangle if this angle is theta this is 90 we know so this angle will be 90 minus theta 90 minus theta this is 90 so automatically this will be an in right triangle Uh, a and B, BN will give us BN is equal to this is perpendicular opposite of 90 and this is the hypotenuse AB. Perpendicular by hypotenuse is called sin theta. So it will be AB sin theta. AB sin theta. This will give us BN is equal to AB is A sin theta. Like this, for this one we have to find out. Let's be question number one. Now, for secondary minimas, to obtain secondary minimas, we imagine like this. We divide the slit AB into even parts like 2, 4, 6, 8, like that. We divide the slit into 2, 4, 6 parts such that corresponding wavelengths interfere with each other with part difference such that the corresponding wavelengths interfere with each other with path difference lambda by 2 we break up into lambda by 2 lambda by 2 parts now for first order secondary minima for first order secondary minima We divide it into this one first into two parts. Let us see if we divide the slit into two parts. Suppose this is A and this is B. If you divide the two parts, then the C will come here. And the rays are going like this. If you divide it into two parts, this is your N. If you divide it into two parts, this part will be lambda lambda by 2 this part lambda by 2 here also it will be plus lambda by 2 then it will become uh, lambda so if you use this this bn is now lambda this equation will use it now for first order secondary minima let us take this theta as theta 1 diffraction means we are going to find out this theta only by how much we get diffracted to get first order minima for first order minima, I'll write down Bn is equal to lambda that is equal to A sine theta 1, I'll write down for first one. Then, next one let us see. So this will give you theta 1, this will give you the diffraction, how much it should take place to get first first order secondary minima first order secondary minima now for second order second order
secondary minima your condition will be you have to divide the slit into four parts suppose this is a this is b and when you divide into four parts then one two one part this is n here one part two part then again one more point will take three part so here this will become lambda by 2 this is you are dividing into all into this part lambda by 2 lambda by 2 plus lambda by 2 will be lambda next this one will be 3 lambda by 2 next will be 2 lambda so if you put in that equation number 1 you will get the relation 2 lambda this time is equal to a sin theta 2 suppose for the second diffraction a theta 2 now likewise if you go on if you divide into next six part then you get third order secondary minima so the nth nth order secondary minima you can find this formula here you can see lambda next is 2 lambda then next will be 3 lambda for nth order it will be n lambda then is equal to a the amplitude will remain the same so the width of the slit will remain the same sine theta n so this will be your condition for secondary minimas this is the nth order now the third one that is your secondary maximas to obtain secondary maximas we divide the slit into odd numbers 3 we will divide it into 5 parts we will divide it into 7 parts for such that the corresponding wavelets interfere with each other with path difference lambda by 2 then we get the second order our first order secondary maxima now in this case you are going to divide the slit the first order you get if you divide the slit into three parts i'll show you here if you divide the slit into three parts what will happen suppose this is a this is b so I divide into three parts and take two points here one two three four together the rays are going like this like this if i draw this perpendicular here this is n lambda by 2 plus lambda by 2 will become lambda plus lambda by 2 will become 3 lambda by 2 so now bn will become in equation 1 you put it bn will become 3 lambda by 2 3 lambda by 2 that will be equal to a sin theta 1 dash you put it for maxima to distinguish it then for the second order secondary maxima you have to divide the slit into five equal parts now divide it into five equal parts if you divide the slit into five equal parts it will look like this this is a b one two three four lines uh, points will come one one part two part three part four part and this is fifth part so this is n perpendicular then here it is lambda by two plus lambda by two will be lambda plus lambda by two will be three lambda by two plus lambda by two will give two lambda plus lambda by two will give you 5 lambda by 2 so in this case for the second order secondary maxima you will get bn is equal to 5 lambda from equation 1 by 2 is equal to a sin theta 2 dash we are putting for maximas 
like that you can go on the third order fourth order fifth order like that to obtain or to get the nth order therefore the nth order secondary maxima your relation will be here you can see 3n by 2 5 sorry 3 lambda by 2 5 lambda by 2 what numbers is coming 2n plus 1 divided by yeah 2n plus 1 n if it is 1 2 water 2 plus 1 is 3 lambda by 2 lambda by 2 is common here this will give you a sine theta n dash this relation will give you the nth order secondary maximus like this you will have to know how to find out the relation which will be helpful for your numerical as well now these are the two conditions and then from here what we find out actually is what is n here n is a number a integer n is an integer in both the cases for maxima as well as minima n here n represents 1, 2, 3 and so on natural number n is a natural number here so like this you can find out wherever you get how much it should diffract to get maximums and how much it should diffract to get minimums in different different positions now let us see the distribution of intensity to show the distribution of intensity graphically in the single slit experiment you can take the axis like this this is your y axis it will show intensity this shows intensity and in terms of path difference let us take along x axis this is the center of your screen that you have drawn now as i have already said to you it will look like this The distribution of intensity so like this to go the minima are obtained at part difference lambda 2 lambda 3 lambda 4 lambda and so on and this side minus lambda minus 2 lambda minus 3 lambda so your minus 4 lambda and so on but in case of Young's double slit experiment in interference pattern you have seen that uh, the intensity of the fringes are equal the amplitudes are equal everywhere it is equal but in diffraction it becomes lesser and lesser as you go away from the center Now let us calculate the width of this central maxima. Width of central maxima. The width of central maxima, just now we have drawn this, the central maxima, then we have first secondary minima, here also you have first secondary minima. This distance is called the width of the central maxima the central the width of central maxima is the distance between the first order secondary minima on either side first order secondary minima on either side of the screen for first order secondary minima
The relation was lambda is equal to a sin theta 1. So from here, sin theta 1 equal to lambda by a. And for small angles, sin theta 1 can be written as theta 1 equal lambda by a. Or small values of theta. Or here theta 1 we are using. Now let us take this as equation number 1. Then you go back to your main diagram. There you will find out the first, this is your slit AB. This point was C. It was going on the screen like this at O. Then from here the line that originates reaches here P. This distance was Y and this distance is angle. And this angle is theta that you have taken. Now tan theta is to define and this screen is at a distance d from the slit. So tan theta will give you y by d. From the diagram you get and you can write tan theta. Here we'll use theta 1 for first secondary minima equal to y by d. So for small angles here also theta 1 is equal to y by d. That will be equation number 2. If you compare these two equations, equation 1 and 2, from equation 1 and 2, you will get y by d is equal to lambda by a. Y by D is equal to lambda by A and this will give you Y is equal to lambda D divided by A and this distance Y is for the first secondary minima again for the next secondary minima again you have to come Y here then only you will get the width of the central maxima so this Y will have to double it therefore the width W I D T H width of the central maxima. Let us write this beta, it will be 2 times of y, 2 times lambda d by a. This will be your width of the central maxima. And to find out the width of angular separation and the width of angular separation of the central maxima, we'll do this. From here you'll get it. Theta 1 you wrote here. So that also you double it. 2 theta 1, 2 theta 1 is equal to, if you multiply by 2, it will become 2 lambda by a, 2 lambda by a, this will be the width of angular separation. Let us see the difference between interference and diffraction pattern. So here are the differences between interference and diffraction pattern, I have written down here, you can note it down. It's very frequently asked question in board exams. Interference is the result of interaction of light coming from two different web fronts originating from two coherent sources. Interference we use slits S1 and S2. So two coherent sources of light should come and interfere. Whereas diffraction pattern is the result of interaction of light coming from different parts of the same web front. We have taken only one web front from a single source. The second point it says the interference pattern has a number of equally spaced bright and dark fringes. About the spacing it says the breadths or the widths of dark and bright fringes are equally spaced. Um, whereas in the diffraction pattern has central bright maxima. The maxima is very thick whereas the secondary maxima are thinner and thinner the breadth becomes lesser and lesser which is twice as wide as the other maximus and this third point 
Somewhat here it is coinciding, but this one, this sentence you can omit from here, it's up to your, your wish. This one I have written in the third step. In interference pattern, all the dark and bright fringes are of equal intensity. The intensities of dark and bright fringes all are equal. All the bright, 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 they are equal. All the dark, 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 they are equal. The intensities are equal. Whereas in diffraction pattern, their intensities uh, falls down. Uh, it becomes lesser and lesser as you go away from the center of the screen or either side of the screen. So with this, I've come to an end of the discussion on this chapter, chapter 10, Wave Optics. Have a nice day. Stay safe, stay home and do your studies properly. Thank you.